guys with another boiler retrofit here. We have a failed boiler down here. It's an older super hot and the heat exchanger has failed. And we are going to clean this mess up. I've already talked to the homeowners about what their options are, what they want to do. They decided to go with doing the system right. Um, and we're going to clean up everything. We're going to get rid of this mess of zone valves and wires up here. You can see a lovely mixture of glycol, the old ProPress uh, fittings that have been weeping through here. They've been on there for a while. And we got loops that go underground. It's still high temp to baseboards, but unfortunately it's kind of a big no-no to go underneath the concrete, but there's not much we can really do about that now. But we are going to uh, clean up everything. These are the two zones for the basement. Wires are a mess, just everything. We're gonna make this thing look so much so much better in the end. Um, we're gonna remove this combustion air. We're gonna remove this existing hot water tank. And we're gonna put in a Navian NFC combo. We're gonna put plywood on the back wall there. And we're gonna clean everything up. And hopefully in about a week's time or so, we'll be up in business again. Plan is to do the venting through the roof if we can. And, uh, We'll see how it all turns out. So, see you guys in a few. Just literally falling apart. So, yeah. And we're back guys, two weeks later or thereabout, and we are done. Thankfully, we did not need to use the heating portion. We were able to give them domestic hot water in the mean term by uh, putting the hot water tank right here, which we removed today. And we finished up the venting through the uh, existing chimney, which is where the hot water tank was vented. And then we cleaned up the water lines, which was attached to the hot water tank. And we just rubbed gas from the bottom of this. Uh, to feed the tank in the interim but we are complete and it does look a lot better um, from the start basically what we did was we uh, used about three sheets of plywood painted spray painted the black and that was the key if you roll black paint it doesn't get into the grooves of the plywood so uh, it was actually quicker to spray paint three sheets and then we did a did an extra sheet over here on this side as well just to kind of Make sure we have a solid backing and for an overall presentation. Now, one key thing here is uh, <clears throat> we had zones that were upstairs and we cleaned up a lot of the piping. And then of course we had zones downstairs in the basement. And sadly, these go through the concrete, but like I say, there's nothing we can do about it. Should never have been done, but obviously these feed a few zones in the basement. So we uh, cleaned it up, did a true reverse return. And you can see here, we've labeled the zones one, two, three, and so on, up to six. And then these are uh, correspondingly one, two, three, all the way down to six. And here we did a zone valve legend. So we got downstairs bedroom, rec room, garage, master bedroom, media room, and dining room. So this will be helpful. Whoever works on this next, hopefully it's from our company, um, it'll make servicing a dream. Give it a nice clean look. We ran the thermostat wires, or sorry, the zone valve wires, um, the yellow motor wires and the red end switch wires to this terminal block right here. And then we put them behind the wall and fed them over into this uh, Tecmar controller, which actually has a six zone relay. And we got all the, uh, the wires here for everything. And gave it a nice clean look the only thing that's not really clean is this pump wire that we could have gone into the wall and up but i figured what's the point point? and this is our main circulator this zone controller when there's a call for heat it will send power to this system pump or secondary pump and it will activate now you can see pressure is a bit high right now just because we've been purging some air out of it um, but obviously we have a delta p here of about five psi and it's just nice, quick, tells me if this pump's working or not. Good for diagnosing. Put in a Caliphy micro bubble resorber or air scoop. 
however you want to classify it. They have about a dozen names for these. Um, but basically just an air separator that helps get rid of a lot of the air. And now the system has been up and running for about half an hour and it is very, very silent, which is very nice. So these things do work. They are worth the money. Then of course we have our expansion tank up here mounted on this uh, support bracket from Califacto. And we also have a Califacto pressure tank. These are wonderful. You can isolate it, shut this off, drain the water out, refill the air, uh, recharge the tank. Life makes it very easy um, on top of that. Secondary redundant pressure gauge. Yes, you can get all your information on this unit, but I like to have systems um, or at least gauges and thermometers on the secondary side just to help me diagnose other issues or problems. Auto vent there in the back. Over here for our Delta T, we have our supply thermometer, which is where we want to be right now, just below 180. And of course, we've got a return temperature over here coming back at about 165, so about a 20 degree uh, Delta T. So all in all, very interesting look. Went with more of a, uh, I guess you could say, a peaked or pyramid look for this setup because I wanted to make the expansion tank the center of this whole install. Because um, indeed, it, it is one of the more important things with these uh, combi Navian boilers. Without expansion, you'll have your relief valve, which will come off and discharge. And that's why we have that bucket down there. So yes, all in all, very good. Once again, all the wires are all hidden. Just took a, a few minutes just to feed it because this is a two by four, two by six wall behind it. Easy to do it. We cut a hole behind here to actually get access um, in there and run our wires, run our cables. Over here, I did something a little bit differently. I haven't labeled these yet, but here, nice clean look, ran our wires down here. This handles the boiler specifically. This switch handles the controls specifically. So if this customer wants to just not have their boiler on for the summer, click this off and they have no heat and they might want that. They may not want to have the boiler come on. Yes, you can do that with your outdoor reset too as well, but that's just a redundant thing right there that'll keep that off um, until summertime or until uh, wintertime, sorry. Up here, we put some auto vents here. Because these zones go down into the basement and they're fed that way, I wanted to make sure that there was never gonna be any air trapped up in these areas. Make sure we get that air out. It is not the best for boiler systems, as we all know. Um, but once again, these air separators do a fabulous job of getting rid of the air. Put a, a spill tray in case you're ever servicing one of these zones, because you can just take the guts out, replace it. You don't have to cut anything out. Uh, very easy, very easy and quick to change the zone valves, especially when you have isolation valves above and below. Any water that drips down, it won't get the controls wet because it'll drip down on this drip tray. And same over here for all the instructions for everything. Same here to protect the literature uh, in case you need it. And all in all, down here, the condensate coming down here. I did a little special overflow just in case these don't get serviced. As much as I like to tell people and customers to get it serviced annually, sometimes that doesn't always happen. And you can see now we got our water level finally coming up here. I wanna make a point here too. I can't tell you how many installs I've seen of these acid neutralizers being installed incorrectly. This should not be down here. It should be up here. You want your water level to come in here and then start to rise and neutralize uh, that pH and then finally goes into the overflow, comes down, and then we get discharged over into the floor drain. So that's how it should be installed. If you don't do it that way, you're not going to be neutralizing that very well. And once again, just in case this ever gets bridged or plugged, we have an overflow here as well. Put our Navi Clean in, um, this magnetic filter. This is a must for every boiler out there. Yes, this is a Fire 2 boiler. It's very hardy, but this is a must and it should be serviced annually. It's gonna keep your system clean. I was just here with the homeowner a few minutes ago and we were actually flushing the system. And that's why I put these valves up here because you can actually isolate this and isolate this, the supply and the return, and literally open one zone or the second or the third and put fresh water from the hot water tank into here 
or from the on-demand rather, and then your discharge goes over to the sink and you can flush each zone very quickly. And I showed the homeowner, she couldn't believe how dirty the system was. So once again, yes, they act as um, valves for flushing, um, can be for drains depending where you put them, but these are so important for doing some really good maintenance on that boiler on an annual um, or uh, yearly basis, right? So, and then over here, we have a minimum protection of our 9D backflow device. Uh, usually with boilers, you should have a reduced pressure backflow assembly or even have um, a glycol pot feeder. You could do that as well, but this is a must. Now there's no boiler uh, reducing valve here or pressure reducing valve for the boiler because the solenoid valve inside, it controls the pressure coming into the system. Uh, of course, you, you all you will have room down the road if you ever need to add it, if need be. And we have our own separate shutoff here. Water lines, cold and hot. It's one of my one of my frustrations with Navian. I wish things were a little bit more sym symmetrical, um, but of course, try to do my best here with the uh, lovely manifold and header system they give you to kind of give it a an, uh, a nice even flow uh, and look to it. And then of course, we bring the hot and cold over up and then we feed on over um, to where we need to feed to the distribution. And then of course, we, we also changed the main shutoff for these customers for free. I was gonna clean this up. I just couldn't leave the mess that was here before. And it was a mess if you saw earlier in the video. Once again, uh, pressure relief valve for the hot side of the on-demand uh, for the domestic side. This will discharge usually at around 150 uh, PSI or 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously we don't want to go anything greater than that and that's why that's here. And this one is also a relief valve but it's our safety relief valve for the boiler. So if we get up to 30 PSI uh, this will discharge as a safety precaution. And down here we have our flush valves. So this is our domestic side, these two right here. And then we can also flush the, uh, the boiler itself and get that heat exchanger cleaned and descaled annually. Here's our condensate trap back here as well. If you ever need to open that up uh, to do some servicing, cleaning it, very important. I also put a T over here just to let the condensate breathe when it drains down into, or vent rather, uh, into the actual neutralizer. So uh, put a plug here for the, for the power because uh, it's just a standard 120 volt plug. And then we put some redundant shutoffs over here just in case you want to isolate it further um, upstream. Once again, venting system 636, uh, and I use schedule 40 PVC for the intake. Just a better product than using ABS, and we were lucky because it's very close to the vent and goes up through the roof there. And of course, we have an auto vent here to get rid of the air out of the system. When commissioning these units, probably takes, for most people, 20 minutes to 30 minutes to get the air out. All depend how your system is designed and made but I'm very happy with the completion of this unit and how it uh, turned out. Some customers have been asking a little bit more on how these on-demand combi units work. And what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna take this off and I'll show you a little bit more about these units. Won't go into too great a depth because obviously it's a very busy unit, but uh, step by step and here we'll show you. We have, right here, the combustion air intake, where you can see my laser pointer. This brings in the combustion air. And of course, that screen has to be opened, cleaned, and serviced on a regular basis. If it doesn't, this furnace will starve of combustion air and it won't work properly. Uh, right up here is the ignition uh, and flame sensor uh, diodes that go into the heat exchanger. They do need to be cleaned, serviced, maintenance on a regular, um, also by a professional, mind you. Please don't do this stuff by yourself at home. If you are a homeowner, this is very complex equipment and should be handled by, in this province, a class B gas fitter or above. And down here we have our controls. We have our dip switches so that we can adjust uh, different parameters that we may need to, um, just to make sure the boiler is operating at the proper sea level, um, atmospheric pressure, all that stuff. What type of gas we're using, natural gas, propane, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, service switch here, just in case if we want to shut power off to it. 
Uh, and then of course we have our main control board. And the, the funny thing is there's just two wires going to this boiler and that's these. The, these two wires are calling for the heat when, uh, or when it, when it does call for heat. This uh, Tecmar controller does the thinking. It does a lot of the work. It handles all the zone valves, all the thermostats. And basically when there's a, just a single call, right now we have three zones calling for heat. But when there's a single call, you will come on over here, sense power and be like, hey, I need heat, and it'll come on. Right now we're at 178 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what we want. Domestic hot water has not come on. When there is a call for domestic hot water, and we are to open up this tap, let's say over here, this domestic hot water um, will kick up to high fire, or the border will kick up to high fire, and, uh, and we'll uh, switch from central heating to domestic hot water. Uh, and then once the domestic hot water call is satisfied, it goes back to central heating. And uh, what else do we have here? This is basically our inducer fan that basically pulls um, our gases out of the heat exchanger and up in through and up out into our exhaust and away it goes here. Rating plate as well. If you're looking for the model number and serial number, it's also on the side of this particular unit. Down here, just go over some brief things. This is the boiler feed line, and of course, this is our solenoid valve that opens and closes and regulates the pressure into the system itself. Here's our plate heat exchanger in the back, um, right there, and that where is where the transfer of domestic hot water uh, happens from the from the heating side to, of course, the hot water side. Uh, one thing about the Navians, they are constantly innovating. Uh, there's a few things, as I've said before, that I'm not a huge fan of Navian, but like I said, they are getting better, but they're making it easier now for you to get to a lot of these control uh, valves, um, three-way valves. This right here obviously has the, uh, um, transfers the heat either from here or to the domestic hot water right there, but it's easier to get at than somewhere far back behind where you don't know where it is. It, like right here, this, so this right here is our primary pump, and you can see this primary pump, um, you'll have to take off this to get at it, but once again, you can get at the unions if you have to replace it. And this is what I call a primary secondary system. You have a primary pump that circulates through this loop, and then you have a secondary system that circulates through this. Um, and that is the best way to do hydronics. A lot of people sometimes just put this boiler in and run off your boiler pump, and your boiler will be probably dead in about a year, if not sooner. And I've seen it happen time and time again. Uh, once again, when you're doing, or if you're looking at getting a boiler quote, if you go cheap, you will get what you pay for. And more often than not, if you spend a little bit more money, once again, you will get what you pay for. I have seen it time and time again, the lowest price gets the job. And usually we're not the contractor that does the work, but we will be getting the phone call a few years later to come back and fix it. So sometimes people, when you're doing this and you're investigating and trying to understand whether you wanna spend a lot of money on your boiler system, definitely do your research and definitely look at your contractor, whoever that may be, um, because cheapness or a, a cheaper value is not necessarily a good value. Uh, once again, here we have the gas valve up here. Um, like I say, it's a very complex machine and without going into great detail and taking things apart, we can't see all of the, uh, all of the things, but once again, uh, the, you know, it just, it makes, um, it makes life a lot easier when you have something in such a small, compact unit. And Navian is very good with her warranties. It's one thing I'm actually very happy with as opposed to some of the other brands out there where I've had a lot of frustration on getting parts. Uh, right here, this is our domestic cold inlet. This filter right here uh, should be pulled out in service because obviously if this plugs up, we're not gonna get enough water flow across the heat exchanger and we won't get the gallons per minute uh, for the faucets or tubs or um, domestic hot water that we'll be using on the outlet here. We have our small sensor probe there for the temperature for the domestic hot water um, and so on and so forth. But yeah, a little brief little summary of this unit looks very complex but makes a lot of sense when you look at this um in uh in a in a greater context but guys this is it we are done we are complete with this install hopefully you enjoyed this video like subscribe comment share 
And uh, the next boiler on demand system, I have a little surprise for you. So definitely keep your eyes open for that one. Take care, stay classy. James from Canuck Mechanical, signing out.